My name's Paddy Bullard. I was this year director of another one of the uh, Chase uh, doctoral training programs, uh, the material witness one. Um, I'm just going to take 10 minutes now to talk to you a little bit about what we did uh, on material witness uh, and what we're hoping to do in the future as well. And to talk about, to talk a little bit more personally about how it, related, how it relates to my own research and how it was a, a program, a series of events that came out of, uh, of, of personal interests and, uh, and a, a scholarly community outside, uh, an international scholarly community interested in uh, cultural material studies. I think I'm unique amongst the, this year's uh, series of Chase programs insofar as I inherited a program that existed already. This is the second year that Material Witness has run. Last year uh, it was uh, founded and originally run by my colleague Alex Bovey, who's now Director of Research at the Courtauld Institute. We had a chance to uh, sort of think about different methods for talking about cultural material studies within a humanities uh, context. Um, Alex's original series was very much focused on her chief interests, which were um, medieval, were art historical, and were focused on uh, architecture to a great extent as well. Uh, and taking her cue, I also pursued, very much pursued my own interests uh, in designing this course, and this is what we came up with. In the first case, my great interest in cultural material studies is theoretical. I'm interested in how my own scholarship, uh, which is basically uh, intellectual history, focused on the Enlightenment with a strong book history slant, uh, how to open up that this rather dry, sort of narrow kind of scholarship that I do to a much, much larger sphere, a uh, series of, uh, of, of interdisciplinary influences. I'm interested broadly in what uh, in uh, art history and literary studies is known as thing theory, uh, uh, and uh, theories about how, how humanists who tend to deal with texts can go about the study of material objects. Uh, there's, uh, of course, a broad range of very interesting theoretical works which, are, which have informed uh, the way that we humanists deal with these things. Uh, there's the Oxford Handbook of Cultural Material Studies, which was uh, edited by uh, archaeologists and anthropologists, very interesting sets of ideas coming from there. There's Daniel Miller, who is himself an archaeologist in his book Stuff, and of course Bruno Latour, who's the uh, grand fromage of this, of this kind of study in the background. My other great interest, corresponding closely with what Francesca was talking about, is that I'm a book historian. I hang out in libraries and I look at the history, particularly of the printed book in the hand press era, so from the invention of printing in the middle of the 15th century right up to the automation of printing at the beginning of the 19th century. And uh, the, the classic studies in this field are uh, works like the works of Elizabeth Eisenstein, Roger Chartier, and Robert Danton there. So generally speaking, the individual workshops and study days that we've had on the uh, Material Witness series this year have followed two broad trends. The first is the uh, trend of uh, material humanities as it manifests itself in ideas of manufacture and making and tool use. Making, of course, is an idea that, uh, a set of ideas that humanists are, uh, have always been very interested in. After all, poesis, the root of our word for, for poetics and poetry, means making. Uh, so I'm interested in, in, in that long history of theories of making and how it relates to humanism. Um, just to give you some examples of some of the sessions that we've had this year that have, that have touched upon this topic, uh, are on the 21st of April 2015, we went to uh, the Museum of English Rural Life in Reading, where we had an extraordinary session uh, looking at uh, tool use methods that, uh, that uh, historians and museum studies people do to, to study different kinds of tools, different kinds of, of tools for making within a very, very particular context, the context of rural vernacular culture, a context which, uh, which tends to erode historically very quickly indeed. So that was a fascinating session. Another one, this wasn't, I, I think Vivian Richmond is here. Vivian, hello Vivian, thank you. <laughs> Lovely to meet you at last. Uh, this was a session run here at Goldsmiths uh, by my colleague, Dr. Vivian Richmond, who's head of history here, uh, uh, sourcing the archive textiles and materials. So again, the, the correspondence there with, with ideas of, of making and manufacture and, uh, and handcrafts is very evident. So that was the first stream, manufacture and making we looked at. The second theme for our presentations was, uh, once again, corresponding with what Francesca did, there was a very strong history of the book element, 
I was interested, we were interested in different theories, different methods for looking at uh, different kinds of media for texts, uh, different ways of manufacturing books, and different forms, material forms uh, for texts. To give some example of the diversity of sessions at which we looked, of the di diversity of methodological perspectives uh, through which we approached this topic, um, on the 11th of May we went to uh, the British Museum and had an extraordinary session uh, run by uh, the gentleman with the ZZ Top beard, there, uh, my colleague David Stirrup, uh, and my colleague uh, Robbie Robertson on um, uh, uh, First Nation uh, uh, Native American artefacts and uh, the British Museum's extraordinary holdings in that class of things. And something that David especially talked about was the idea of these objects as bearers of texts. Texts of a kind which are very, very unfamiliar to us indeed. But that session really, really it kind of blew my mind and made me think about how I can uh, apply the sorts of methods that people like David are using to my own slightly more conventional humanistic study. Another example, the very uh, first session, uh, this is my great friend uh, and colleague, Professor James Carley, uh, and uh, it was, uh, this session was based at Canterbury Cathedral Library, and it was a general introduction to how you go about the business of, of hands-on study of medieval and Renaissance, uh, and indeed Enlightenment period books. So there's just two very, very brief examples, or four very brief examples, of the diversity of workshops and study days that we've had on the Material Witness Programme. Steve, uh, when he invited me to give this presentation, asked me to address very specifically this question of material objects in a digital age. So I'm just going to say a very, just to conclude really, say a very, very few brief words on that particular topic. You would think, wouldn't you, that this world of making uh, and material objects and handcrafts and hands-on work that we were exploring in the material workshops is very, very different from the world of digitized text that Francesca has been exploring in her wor workshops. I would argue that that is not the case at all. Um, and indeed, that argument is, is quite a familiar one. I mean, after all, the digital you know, digital refers to our fingers, doesn't it? As does the manual manufacture of, uh, of material goods, of the sort that we were looking at at the material witness workshops. So just, just linked by figuration, there is this focus on handcrafts and, uh, and, and, and manual technologies, which seems to unite these two streams together. And of course, this is something that all sorts of uh, very interesting scholars have explored. And way back in the late 1990s, Malcolm McCulloch Anyone familiar with Malcolm McCulloch's extraordinary work? Um, uh, published a book called Abstracting Craft, The Practice Digital Hand, where he argued that um, all sorts of digital crafts person, persons these days go about the business of designing and programming electronic texts in a way which is very, very closely analogous to uh, those craftsmen of the arts and crafts movements at the end of the 19th century and so on. Um, this is a theme that was taken up just as far as sort of pop science and pop, intel uh, pop intellectual writing is concerned uh, by the great, great Richard Sennett in his book, The Craftsman. He has a fantastic chapter on Linux programming and the craft-like way in which uh, Linux and open source programmers go about designing their material. Um, so this is a well-established set of connections uh, between the material world, the world of handcrafts, and the digital world, the world of, the world of programming that are always there. And just a conclusion to go away with, I, I think something that I've learned from this year of, uh, of working in, on, uh, on mat in material culture studies and thinking about how it relates to my everyday business of uh, working with computers, uh, which are, after all, the main tool that we all work with, is that um, I, I hope that thinking about this connection will remind us that the, the digital is itself a medium. We have this great temptation to think that the, uh, uh, that, uh, the digital realm is this sort of abstract, illimitable, infinite realm that we can do whatever we want in. And that, of course, is not true. Uh, the digital realm is a medium like any other material medium. Thanks very much. <laughs>